Okay, let's. Um... Yeah, let's um, just turn in our Bibles to. Um... Just one second. Yeah, um, Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter five, and um, we're looking at verses fifteen and sixteen. Okay, uh, Ephesians five verses fifteen and sixteen, which says, "See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil." Okay. See that you walk circumspectly. Circumspectly meaning um, carefully, uh, at the same time, um, you know, sure of what you're doing, um, uh, with a lot of thought, intentionally, right? See that you walk circumspectly. So, which means see that you live your life in that manner, intentionally, um, without, uh, you know, it's just it's the opposite of just doing things arbitrarily or um, and so on, not as fools, but as wise. Okay, so use wisdom, uh, think through, and uh, and we know, you know in in James we read about the kind of wisdom, godly wisdom, that comes from above, right? And he also says, um, redeeming the time. Okay, so. So we know that uh, you know time, the quality of uh, I mean one of the attributes of time is that it passes, right? You can't really get it back. You can't set back the time, right? Um, but he says redeeming the time, so which means uh, you know walk in such a way that uh, time itself is bent or time itself is brought back. So in other words, we know that time cannot be, but walk in such a way that time is used well. Right, time as a precious resource is used well. He says because the days are evil. Right, so um, that instruction that we have for us, something for us to you know think about, something for us to also you know realize that okay, how am I spending my time? Okay, not to be fearful of, not to be paranoid about, but definitely to be to treat you know if, if you have like thousand rupees. 100 rupee notes, you know, 10 100 rupee notes uh, in your pocket. Will you be careful or will you be careless? Right. We will be careful. Of course, we will be generous. You want to give to people. You will want to take care of your need. Okay. All that is there. But you will not be careless. Right. We will not be careless. Right. We will be protective of it. We will be mindful of it. So, He's just shifting, you know. Are you thinking the same way about time? Okay, minutes, seconds, minutes, hours, days, years, decades. Are we using it well? Because um, time has this capacity to slip by if you're not careful, right? Suddenly you realize, hey, five years have gone by. Suddenly you realize ten years have gone by, right? And where did they go? So saying, redeeming the time, walk circumspectly, redeeming the time, right? So let's just pray and commit our time into God's hands and say, Lord, thank you for the resource that you've given. I commit it into your mighty hands. Give me the wisdom to use it well. Um, help me to walk circumspectly, intentionally, and um, help me to walk what is this redeeming of time? Teach me how to do it. Yeah. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this wonderful resource that you've given, Lord, each one of us, God, this wonderful resource called time. And Master, we pray that you'll give us the wisdom to use it well. Lord, give us the right perspective of time, Lord, that we may not be fearful, that we may not be, Lord, um, paranoid about it, Lord, but Lord, really enjoy it. Enjoy the time that you've given us. Enjoy the minutes and days and hours that you've given us, Father God. And use it well, Father God. Lord, teach us what does it what it means to redeem the time, Lord. And I pray that we will use it well uh, for your glory, Father. Help us to live in the present fully. And at the same time, Lord, 
that we would walk circumspectly, Lord, when it comes to things of the future as well, Lord. We thank you. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, let me just uh, share the notes. Looking at leadership, what did we look at last time? Organizing. Okay, so organizing is something that uh, that comes naturally to some people. You know, you norm normally, uh, maybe, you know, uh, naturally you're an organized person. Okay, so you know where to find your things. You know, anybody finds your things immediately or you have a difficulty finding your things? Your own things, you know, like your keys, your your personal stuff, okay, um, where, where you need to find it. Even sometimes within the bag itself, Francis is reaching for the bag. So I just, <laughs> even within the bag, you know, where did I keep it? You know, sometimes you just open it, just throw it there. And then we want to find it and it's all, you know. So some of us are naturally well organized. You know, that's a personality trait. You you want things in place. If things are not in place, it disturbs you, right? Um, and some of us are too stringently, you know, even if, if it moves, you know, by a few inches, yeah. You, know, you get upset. Yeah, the pencil has to be there. The, the thing has to be there. You know. Um, so, but irrespective of what uh, personality-wise, how we are, uh, we need to either learn to organize ourselves and our time. Uh, you know, our people, etc. In ministry, um, and if you, if it, if that is a natural thing, to to really use it well, right? To really strengthen that. Okay, so today we'll look at organizing our schedule, organizing our time. I think I shared a little bit about how in the ministry you can schedule your time, right? So uh, especially if it's a church ministry, you think of the whole year, maybe the years ahead, and think of what you want to do. You know? So it means that the ministry has a plan, right? Um, okay, this is what we want to do this year. Okay, as a church ministry, this is what we want to do this year. So we think of all the things that we would like to do, all the things that we want to do, and then list it down um, week-wise, maybe month-wise, week-wise, etc. Right? See, some of the things are already planned. If you, you know, if you are there for the youth missions uh, in Hyderabad, you know, it's already planned that uh, we will have our youth missions. Um, I think 30th October, 1st November. You know that those three days, right? So we already. That's already decided. The Christian Leaders Conference, again, already decided for the next year. So um, like I was sharing, by the by, by October of the present year, uh, the plan is more or less put in place for what we need to do for the next year, right? for the next calendar year. So um, let me just share that, um, that document. It's a simple Excel sheet, but um, it, it kind of helps. Okay. And uh, yeah, and you will learn more in depth about about this in uh, uh, church administration. So uh, we're not really going too much in depth. But um, is this visible? Is it big enough? It is okay. So you see there, you know. Um, so every ministry, okay, whether it's youth. Uh, whether it's women's ministry, whether it's men's ministry, uh, every ministry, um, you know, plans this out and gives a calendar of this, which is put together. Okay, so you see what is happening in Feb. Let me just. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, so um, yeah, so we had water baptism. If you look at Sunday fourth. Uh, we had water baptism. We had monthly youth meeting at uh, APC South. Um, but there are a couple of things which didn't happen, which have been actually the changes were made after this was released. Okay, like the worship team audition orientation, uh, worship team night. If you leave, if you see 9th Feb, you know. So th that that flexibility is always there, right? Um, but not too many changes, right? But this was these these things were actually uh, because 9th was supposed to be. Uh, worship team shoot so you know that worship team night is not happening but if you look at the weekend schools if you look at the membership class the monthly youth meetings um, the volunteer appreciation day women's luncheon right so if you're having uh, if your church your ministry has all these you know various 
things that you're doing, it helps to have a calendar so that you can schedule. You know, it's just a, a practical wisdom, right? Um, that doesn't mean that uh, you know, as far as possible, we will try to stick to this, not make arbitrary changes, right? Work towards it. Now, okay. So how does this help? So this helps in getting all the different teams um, to work together. So we talked about you know uh, organizing people, right? So we have different teams. Uh, like typically in a church ministry, you might have uh, the admin team. We'll have the you know t people. Uh, see, when I say teams, uh, you don't necessarily need to have four or five people in each you know area. It can be just one person. You know, let's say it's a small setup, right? Small church. It can be just one person. One person doing multiple things also, right? One person can be doing graphics. One person can be doing you know, administration, whatever. But it helps to put everything together. Every can everybody can work together. Everybody can, um, you know, systematic systematically do these things so that things are done well, right? Okay. Um, at a personal level, okay. Let's say so. This we are talking as an at an organizational level. Uh, at a personal level, also we can, you know, you can schedule your time. Okay. So how many of you have the habit of uh, making to-do lists, like every day to-do lists? Okay. One, two. Okay. And sometimes, okay, when you have a lot of things to do. Okay. So the to-do list is is a great um, uh, as a great tool. You know, it's, it's really good so to help us organize our thoughts, prioritize things, right? So we might have 10 things to do, um, but which is the most important one and, you know, start doing that. Um, so start planning so we can use our time well, right? Um, so that's, that's quite useful. Okay, so we have another section on productivity planning. So something about to-do lists, I'll share a little bit more in that, right? Okay, so what is the other area, fourth area where we need to organize is our finances, right? When we're looking at ministry uh, as a leader, organizing our finances, okay? So knowing fully well that whatever money we spend, we are accountable to God, we are accountable to the people whom we are leading. So this needs to be handled well, this needs to be utilized well, okay? This is one area because of which the world will world points fingers, okay, at the church and and blames the church, blames the ministry, blames the ministers of God. And uh, this is one area where people can fall also, right? So we need to be careful. We need to be, uh, you know, uh, extremely careful, not just us personally, but make sure that entire organization uh, does this well. Simple thing is how much of money is coming out, keep a record of it. How much of money is being spent and where is being spent, keep a record of it, right? That's a simple way to start off. You know, it can, uh, for example, it can start in a simple, you know, notebook where it is where it is written. You know, if it's a church, every Sunday, okay, so much of offering came in, so much is being spent. You, know, you spend so much for tea, so much for coffee, so much for you know, bills, uh, where, wherever. And keep a record of it. One record of it. Write it down on which was on what did you spend it, and have a proof of it. Okay, it's not enough to just. Write down, okay, I spent on this. You know, but what is the proof? Proof is a receipt or proof is a you know transfer made. You know, if you made a UPI payment, uh, you have that. So, you know, keep a record of it. Uh, so you can be transparent and you, you'll you'll also be you know confident that this is what I spent on, this is what we received. Okay. Um, again, the in-depth details working of it. We will learn in church administration, but basically, we need to make sure that our finances are organized. You know? uh, again, this could be a strength for people personally, right? You know how much you spend, where, what, etc. Um, but if not, this is something that we need to learn. You know, budgeting, uh, finance, uh, budgeting, spending, uh, making a re keeping a record or tracking expenses is important, right? So. When we do this, we know how we are allocating our uh, money, where we are allocating our money. Okay, and when we budget, we we can plan. Okay, where the needs are, where the need is, where we where do we need to spend, how much, etc. Are we spending too much? Should we need to 
reallocate, right? Should we need to reprioritize things? If this is too much we're spending, so maybe we should need to cut back. And all those decisions can be made only if we track. If we don't track, if we don't keep a record, then how can we make those decisions, right? It's as simple as that. So it's important to track down, especially to make those strategic decisions about spending, etc. Because we know, okay, God wants you to do this, and it, it, it requires so much to get it done. Okay, when it comes to time, when it comes to finances. And which is a good thing, you know, this is, it will require so much. So it's not about, hey, how can I spend so much? No, this particular thing that God wants you to do requires so much. So, you know, uh, so do I, do you have enough of it? How do you know only if there is a track of it, record of it, right? So simply put, organizing your yeah, uh, finances. Any questions? Organizing time, organizing finances. Okay, so right from the start, it'll be good if you keep a track of it. If not, also to make those changes so that it's it's kept, uh, you know, make sure that it's done well. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, like if it's, if it's a... Yeah, so right from the start, I remember seeing a, one of those notebooks, no? Where it was written by hand. Sunday, right from the first Sunday. Uh, what is the offering which came in? And what was the expense? So from that, to Excel sheets, to using software like Tally and so on. So, yes. So it's, it's not impossible. See, initially, maybe you're the only person. You're the usher. You're the worship team. You're the, you know, pastor, everything. Initially, yes. Then there will be some people whom you can delegate it to. Some people who are called, who are maybe skilled at this, trustworthy, loyal. So you can let give them, but you can monitor it, you know, check that. So, yes, it does require time. It does require, you know, space and all that. So when you... Um, and the thing is, you know, we can always, if we, when we reach a stage of growth, we can always outsource it to a, like an auditing firm, which can take care of it and, uh, you know, takes care of all that complexities of uh, thing. Um, but it's very necessary, important. If you make a mess of this, then it's going to affect, like we said, you know, the administrative side impacts, influences the spiritual side has a bearing on the spiritual side. The spiritual aspect has a bearing on the administrative organizational aspect. So both are equally important. So you cannot afford to miss out on either. Right? So... Uh, mm. So, okay, I think Anand's question is, uh, you know, if... Um, Yeah, yeah. So the, the thing is this, you know, um, so um, maybe people have questions, okay, why are we spending on this? Or can't we do it in a different way, etc. So, yeah, so right from the start, if you uh, have this in culture, you know, in place, saying that, okay, this is how we're doing it. And this is, I mean, this is how we're doing it as in, you know, this is the money that we are spending on these things. These are the priorities. So that's why the vision helps. Right. So our vision, if you're saying our vision is this to be the voice to the nation, to be, you know, to be salt and light here and to the nations and so on. So you know where the focus is. Right. So so allocation of funds also flows into that. You no. Know? So it, it's in line with that. So everything ties in together. And uh, I don't know if you've seen um, when it comes to church, if you've seen the records right from the start, it's there on the website. Uh, financial records, audited financial reports. Uh, let me just share that with you. Um, um, one second. Um, okay, I'm just opening the website. Let me just share that. Okay, about us. Um, oh man, 
this kind of it's a little shuffle here one second <laughs> um okay um accountability yeah i think under accountability okay i'm, I'm just checking on uh, um, um accountability okay so um so you see that right financial year 2001 2002 okay let me just share the screen okay um sorry um yeah okay so um just tell me if it's on the screen okay so um so these are the financial years right from 2001 so 2001 february 18th is when just started no so right from that time um what is the income what is the expenditure so it's audited and um, put so it's not just the our record so it's done by the external auditor right so like whoever wants can take a look at it so so it's there <laughs> assessment year this is what so you can see uh, like how much has come in how much has gone out so when things are transparent like this um, so something like music equipment so you can see uh, you know how it is just about 3 lakhs or something for the entire uh, i'm you can't see oh Yeah, I just opened the thing. Okay, can you see now? Okay. So, yeah. Okay, cash at bank, three point four eight four eight. <laughs> so, I think that will be the budget of Bible College for I don't know. At the present time, no. It's um, okay. So you can see. you know uh books 2647 for printing of books stationery uh, printing uh, i think eight, sorry 86000 was the printing and travel and conveyance uh, thing and then this is it right so okay so trustee signature auditor external auditor chartered accountant signature so everything is put okay so um so when we do this um see what happens is um everyone who's giving to church okay so so everyone also understands that um hey, this is they transparent they're not taking away their money and running away <laughs> or taking the money and you know spending it in a wasteful manner so that's the thing and of course you know people are always welcome to you know based on this they can check this and always write to the accounts so we've not had anyone write and ask and thing they it's all there yeah yeah exactly so they know you know it's it's not uh, it's a good place to give it's transparent etc so people give um, yeah. okay well the question is this you know um like what prevents us from not doing it you know you can ask ourselves you know what prevents us from not doing it uh are things need to be you know refined in, you know some more is there any gray area there what is it that's preventing us from not doing it you know so when we do it see now again it's visible for all okay people within church it's out it, it's visible everywhere right whoever's on the net can see it so that's the other side of it everybody can see uh the government can see it right yeah whichever government is in power for against everybody can see but it's it's transparent this is what it is so um yeah it's 
it helps us it's one way of saying okay we are accountable for every money that comes in accountable to god first of all and how do we you know kind of make it practical and relevant that we are accountable to god when we are accountable to people right so this is one way of uh, making it um, yeah so so the thing is to start when we are small when the organization is small um to do it in a small way right okay um any other questions apart from this um, sorry um uh, thing i um okay if not we'll uh, continue okay so we are just moving on to the next uh, topic um again in leadership uh, about developing leaders and delegating okay now this is uh, most of this material is from the book house of god uh, written by pastor ashish okay so raising up leaders developing leaders delegating leaders okay so we see when uh, in galatians actually paul refers to the leaders you know he goes um from obscurity you know he writes in galatians 1 um verse 18 right so after 3 years he goes to jerusalem visits peter remains with him 15 days and then etc you know he writes about that and in the, uh, chapter 2 verse 9 he says and when james cephas and john who seemed to be pillars perceived the grace etc so he is talking about uh, james and john and peter uh, and he's referring to them as pillars uh, of the church in jerusalem right so which means he's referring to them as leaders leaders being pillars in the in the body of christ in jerusalem right so so um it is important for us as leaders to develop other leaders okay so that the whatever we are building as leaders or whatever work that we are leading as leaders can be strong okay so we have others who are carrying responsibilities you know i'm sure you've had the you know you've had moments when you you think that you know i wish there were other people who were helping me in this particular thing i seem to be you know carrying a lot of things a lot of responsibilities i'm doing is all alone i wish there were more people help right so that uh, that is exactly you know what um, other leaders can do they can shoulder the responsibility they can carry come alongside and help in carrying the uh, uh, the vision carrying the responsibilities that come with it carrying the load of work that come with that right so we need to raise up leaders well leaders need to be encouraged leaders need to be like just like how you know barnabas did barnabas actually took paul you know out of obscurity he was doing his work but he took paul he brought him to meet with the with the others and so in a way you know he kind of raised him up or launched him into the leadership position that he was called to right uh in similar ways we see that paul raises up other leaders right who are the other leaders that he raised up paul apostle paul timothy titus then antifa <laughs> onesimus sir uh and then um, what about john mark john mark also you know like even though initial start was not so good but uh, you know yeah he says you know bring john mark for he's useful for me in ministry all right so you know these are people he intentionally raised up okay so it's a good model good uh, example for us to follow in order to raise up leaders okay so the question is okay what do i look for in a potential leader okay when we say potential leader this person has the ability has what it takes to be a leader okay so uh, two things you know does that mean that i should not raise other people as leaders well we can always nurture them 
and when they have these potentials or, or when they have these traits these characteristics we can raise them up as leaders okay so we're going to look at a few things like um what to look for okay, first thing is personal life example which means that they've come to a place of living out what they believe okay so which means that uh, you know spiritually their spiritual walk with god where it is consistent and you know we're not saying that they are spiritual giants right but they are believers their spiritual disciplines of you know maybe uh, being in the word spending time in prayer and other things you know it's it's consistent right they are walking uh, and they're living a life of consistently uh, you know following jesus and having a good testimony among others if you look at um, you know in the book of acts we see that they chose some people for the work of distributing to the saints right so what are the qualities that they looked at the apostles okay so we see in uh, acts chapter 6 right sorry yeah um so they were people of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom and uh, they appointed them right over the uh, uh, thing over the ministry so we see that okay this is what they had they were people of good reputation you know how can you have a good reputation okay uh but how does one get a reputation let's say you know for for uh huh? hmm correct okay ha huh? sorry sorry what code of honor <laughs> see something that is seen repeatedly see i don't meet you once and form a reputation i can form an impression you know I, this is my first impression i don't know you know i might have a first impression but a reputation is something that is built over time it is still something that people observe right it need not be who you are right it need not be who you are in the sense i might have a good reputation of you you might you know you might have a good reputation as a as a great person like paul like in, in the in the church uh, at revelation uh, is a church in ephesus where the lord says you have you 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 know you have a reputation of being alive but you are dead right so you can have a reputation which need not be a real indicator of who you are but we are looking at this we are looking at we are observing people are also saying that hey yeah no no it's not it need not be two different things right it need not be uh, a, a, a good reputation need not be two different things but again uh, it can be also yeah so so which means that i have a reputation for being a you know like people outside might say oh, wow wonderful husband wonderful father see how he want how lovingly he opens the car for the wife to get in <laughs> which need not be the truth you know because my wife should testify and say actually you know he's a great husband so which need not be but it can be the same thing also so that's why i'm saying reputation need not be the same as the person because we see that example in you know in revelation also where the lord says say you have a reputation for being alive but actually you are dead right so okay but anyway personal life example reputation you have a good reputation with others you have a good testimony etc which means that it is something done repeatedly okay something consistent over and over again where you build you know you have a reputation so when as a leader you know you want to as leaders you want to raise up other leaders personal life example counts Right. is it consistent i right. do they have spiritual it's it's a good thing to look for in people to raise them up right second one spiritual and emotional maturity okay uh, to be mature what does it mean to be mature no huh? not going up and down 
balanced well okay mature means grown fully grown right or uh, mm. so it's the opposite of you know whenever we want to find out some you know what something is it's also the good to study what it is not it's opposite of being childish right childish irresponsible kind of thing so a mature person is uh, is is grown is uh, knows how to take care of oneself okay so emotions emotions are not you know all over the place uh, they know how to they are self aware okay also it also you know it's it's good to know that okay a person mature is does not have a need right uh, it, it, you know uh, uh, let's say a special emotional mature person is secure okay so what do we mean by that it means that if a person has a need you know a very uh, desperate need for approval all the time okay what does that mean approval need for approval you know yeah i want people to always tell me i want to hear okay i'm i'm good i'm great i'm doing a good job you know whatever i do you know i and so which means this person is insecure if if that person will not receive correction right if you say okay actually this is not good you need to change it that's it the day is gone the person is shaken broken right so um secure and also you can do things so that your you know for fame and personal fame and popularity and so on you know what am i getting out of it right what are the people thinking about me right so uh, emotionally and spiritually person doesn't have or as good as grown beyond this is dead to those things right so so um so like i said you know these are things that well some qualities that people may not have they might be growing into it right so which means we wait for some of these things to be found in them some of these things to be strong in them and then we raise them up as potential leaders okay okay alignment what does alignment mean what does it mean to be aligned yeah in line with in line with so align to the vision teaching culture values of of the ministry or the church right so you're, you're leading them as you're raising them up leaders to be in that ministry right hopefully or you can just raise them up as you know leaders wherever you know wherever they are so in in uh, you know whether it's in the ministry that you are leading or in the ministry that they are going into are they aligned to that vision are they aligned in line with the vision okay. so that's what uh, that's where a lot of conflicts a lot of breaking away happens because the person actually is not in, a, in line with the vision the person has a different vision on the inside so they reach a place of they are appointed as leaders and suddenly you realize that their vision is totally different they don't want to do the things that you have actually raised them up to do you know they want to do something else so they break away and then and then you decide i'm not going to raise up any leader here after you know we come to that conclusion because i raised that person i invested so much and this person did this therefore never again will i raise up leaders everybody will be under me you know so that kind of a attitude you know it's sad but that we see that right so yeah um so you align to the vision align to the teaching you know the the state the doctrine of the church you know what you believe in and also the culture culture and the values okay okay responsible i think that's self explanatory a person who's responsible has a sense of uh, responsibility which means that whatever tasks are given handed to them will they do it well will they do it on time will they carry it out fully okay suppose you know they are supposed to open up the church and keep it ready etc and then you come and then you see nothing is done okay you know that means that person is not they have not told you they have taken off somewhere you know they have just gone which means that that person does not have that characteristic yet of being responsible right so you cannot trust you cannot uh, it's it's like this you know if something cannot take the weight will you will you put more weight on it you know if that table cannot take the weight of your laptop or you know you cannot put weight on it 
so you will think twice like at home i have one chair which is slightly shaky so when guests come we move it out of the way we don't want them to sit there you know and that will be a catastrophic right so why is it that you move it out of the way because you know that it can't take the weight so therefore you know responsible being responsible if the person cannot take the weight of responsibility then they cannot be raised up as leaders right okay reliability yeah exactly so so the thing is you work with people till they reach that place you know you're always nurturing okay nurturing people to for these qualities to be in them but to raise them up as leaders as as these these have to be there in some level at least right uh, otherwise yeah to raise a leader see the, so what are we doing we're going to raise them up as leaders we are going to you know spend time with them raise uh, you know and then launch them into leadership positions right that's the whole objective of now this may not be a long term thing so having said that you want to see these qualities in them okay now for example they might be you know maybe reliability is an issue you know maybe they they 50% of the time they are okay you know maybe or maybe 70% of the time they are fine but you you need to increase that further that's fine but what if it's zero right so then if you can't they're totally unreliable you you can't even see them as potential leaders yet right they have potential as a leader but then this quality is not there means they need to be nurtured to that place and then make them as leaders right yeah so when you work <laughs> Like they were not willing, or if they were not willing to work, uh, like the way how we work and the vision what we have, for, is it? Can we consider it like they have a different vision and they have a different uh, from I mean, God? Always have this question: okay, Why is it? Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, it's, it can just be that um, they are, you know, they think creatively. They look at, you know, uh, they. Uh, look at problems diff differently. Look at look at solutions. You know, g give different options for solutions. It's just that they are being creative. Now that is different from, you know, I I totally don't agree to the way this ministry is. You know, whatever you are doing, it's very different, right? Um, I'm I'm not in line with uh, uh, you know wh whatever the objectives of this ministry is, or wherever we are going in whichever direction we are going. Uh, no, I'm not part of that. I don't want to be part of that. I'm going to be thinking. Uh, you know, I want to do something else, or I feel that you know, as a church, we need to be doing something else. Right? So then, it's very difficult uh, to work together. Yeah. So maybe the see, it, it need not be morally wrong. It need not be ethically wrong. It need not be unscriptural also. Right? Whatever they are thinking, whatever they are saying. So. Yes, we can say okay. They have a different call. They have a different, you know, uh, emphasis. God is calling them to be do something different. So, rather than constraining them and you know putting them, it's better to release them. Say okay, encourage them and say, go ahead. Do just ask you one more thing. Like, see, uh, when when there is a person which is which we raised as a leader. And and when he when he wanted to take half of the con uh, congregation, and he he went out and he he started a church with the the remaining the half of the congregation, and how we can see that and then is will God accept this? And and I saw many pastors that they were developed after they separated this congregation, and they became a big church. Other than the first. So, what is the motive of that person even planting another church? Right. So, maybe God has called them to plant a church, called them to be a pastor, called them to be, uh, you know, an apostolic minister, 
you know in the same place the same you know same city even uh, yeah so the, so the thing is like as we are raising up them as leaders they need to see certain qualities in us also and we need to kind of inculcate saying a hey, if god has called you to do this do it right but when you leave that place where you are serving leave that in a better way than when you entered it right so god is calling me to serve okay i'm i'm going to leave it in a better place leave it in a better state than when i when i first came you know i'm i'm going to serve so that something is done well and i'm going to leave so if you're going to leave in a way where there is lot of strife lot of division and uh, you know these kind of things then you know that then it, it's very sad you know the in the body of christ there is a, there's a lot of people talk there's a lot of gossip and in, there's dishonor you know rather than being glory to god we are actually uh, bringing a lot of shame and you know dishonor to the body of christ to the ministry and so on so so that should not be you know so so even when we are raising up leaders so these things we should talk about it openly you know hey if you want to so if a person is you know going to very tightly hold on and say hey this is it we we are the church there is no other church we are the church that's doing the greatest job on the planet etc and if you're constantly talking like that and then we are going to hold tightly to our leaders and not release them then these things are bound to happen right but you know again you know even if you do everything rightly you know a person can have a wrong motive and do it and all that so yeah so the thing is when you leave you need to really draw people to that particular ministry wherever whichever place you're leading saying oh, you be faithful here and uh, well god has called me to another place and to start something all over well and god is going to help what's the point in taking half the you know people from here you know? so yeah the motive of the person leaving the motive of the person even you know, raising up leaders all that too many factors are there so will god bless the work that's your second question <laughs> god will bless it yeah but the thing is whatever we are sowing we need to understand that uh, you know if you're not careful we are not changing our ways you know it's going to happen it's just going to happen yeah reverse because because this is going to be your mentality right this is what you did this is there in your dna and you are passing it on to the other leaders it will happen and in order to not for that not to happen you are going to be looking at them suspiciously all the time yeah yeah you know when you are going to break away and go because that is what i did now you i'll be careful you know so i'm not going to fully trust you and i'm not going to let you into certain areas of my life i'm not going to be transparent and the other person also builds up other leaders like that so it's a very you know very damaging thing to the body of christ if you're setting a legacy that's uh, or setting a trend that's very um, but yeah uh, just like the corinthian church there's so many things happening um yeah but when we know the truth we don't it's best you know we don't let those things happen you know in our the way we raise up leaders we raise them up well yeah and in a healthy manner so that they are also free to do what they want to do right. yeah okay so uh, we looked at uh, responsibility reliability oh, we're almost done okay okay we'll look at uh, the other um characteristics like excellence continuous growth um the other things those 11 things right um, we look at it in the next class okay 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 thank you god bless